Let's take a look at an incredibly powerful theorem. We'll get into the details of this in a minute. But let's go ahead and see what it says. Every finite abelian group, and it's important, both finite and abelian, is a direct product of cyclic groups of prime power order. It's important the prime power, so it could be a prime or it could be something like 3 squared. Is this moreover that's probably the more important part? The number of terms in the product and the orders of the cyclic groups are uniquely determined by the group. What this really ends up doing is it allows us to classify all finite abelian groups. We can kind of write them up to isomorphism as a direct product of these cyclic groups. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a start with a simple example. Let's say I have Z6, and it doesn't take much to show that this is the direct product of 0, 3 and 0, 2, 4. Now, even though we write it with that x multiplication for inner direct product, remember that we're still using the operation of addition mod 6 for z6. So 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 2, 0 plus 4, 3 plus 0, 3 plus 2 is 5, 3 plus 4 is 7, mod 6 is 1. So we are getting all of z6. And then, remember that any time we've got an inner direct product, it's the same thing as an external direct product, at least up to isomorphism. So this is saying this is isomorphic to Z2, external direct product, Z3. Now, we've done this isomorphism before. And the big thing is, is that even though this thing is really talking about inner direct products, it tends to be more convenient to write it as the external direct product. It's easier to kind of break it down into these classifications. So we're more often going to be write it using, using an external direct product, even though there's always actually an internal direct product going on. So let's take a look here. Let's say we have an abelian group of order 8. Well, 8 is 2 cubed. And let's focus on the 3, that power. You can have 3, you can have 2 plus 1, and you can have 1 plus 1 plus 1. If order doesn't matter, those are the only ways we can add positive numbers together to get 3. So what this says is that there's three different possibilities up to isomorphism as to what this abelian group could be. It could either be z2 cubed or z8. It could be z2 squared, direct product z2, or z4, direct product z2. Or it could be z2 to the first, direct product z2, direct product z2. Up to isomorphism, every abelian group with eight elements has to be isomorphic to one of these three things. What happens, though, if we've got more than one prime in our order? So let's say we had an abelian group of order 36. Well, 36 is 2 squared times 3 squared. And we break down each one. 2 is either 2 or it's 1 plus 1, and the same thing for the other one. So, my 2 
parts can be either one of these things. My three parts can either be either one of these things. So I really have four possibilities for abelian groups of order 36. I can have z 2 squared direct product z 3 squared. I can have z 2 squared direct product z3 direct product z3 by taking the 2 and the 1 plus 1. I can have z2 direct product z2 direct product z3 squared by taking the 1 plus 1 and the 2. Or finally I could have z2 z2 z3 and z3. These four possibilities are all not isomorphic to each other, but these are the only possibilities for what an abelian group of order 36 could be isomorphic to. Every abelian group of order 36 has to be isomorphic to one of these four possibilities. Being able to do this, being able to take every finite abelian group and say, hey, every one is one of these possibilities is incredibly powerful. We can really, by limiting what our possibilities are, we really can learn a lot about what's going on with finite abelian groups.